Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to talk about aromatic compounds and how to name them. Okay, naming aromatic compounds. All right, as you have already heard if you watched the aromatic introduction video, um, there are several compounds that have common names that are aromatic, and you just kind of have to know that they exist and what they are, okay? So you'll see other names derived from that. But what we tend to focus on in naming aromatic compounds is when you have di-substituted benzene rings. And why are these so interesting? The reason why these are so interesting is because they have a different kind of nomenclature that goes along with them. So, let's introduce you to something that is a common name. Okay, so this particular compound is a benzene ring with two methyl groups coming off of it. We know that if we have one methyl group that we call that toluene, this one is called xylene. And there is a difference between when you have xylene with the one and two position filled versus xylene when you have the one and three position filled versus xylene when you have the one and four position filled, okay? So notice that this is, if I were gonna number this, this is one, two, three, this is one, two, three, four, so that's how I got the one, two, one, three, and one, four. All of these would be called xylene, but as you know, with all chemistry naming, that it is an extraordinarily bad idea to call two compounds that are actually different from one another the exact same name. So we could call this one, two methyl, or one, two dimethyl xylene. I totally do that or actually, you wanna call it 1,2-dimethylxylene, sorry. Xylene is the common name for two methyls. Didn't I just say that? I could have sworn I did. If you were gonna name this according to how you usually name things, you would actually call it 1,2-dimethylbenzene. Right, benzene being the common name for the uh, six-membered ring with the circle in it meaning conjugation. But since the, the dimethyl uh, benzene is taken up by xylene, we don't have to do that. We could do one, two xylene, but instead of that, in organic chemistry, we have something that specifically talks about one, two, and that's an O. That O means ortho. Ortho is a designation for one, for having the two substituents at one and two. So all that we put here is orthoxylene. Okay, same thing here, except you have a different designation, right? Instead of the one, two designation, we have a one, three designation. And that one, three designation should be some other letter. That other letter tends to be M, which is meta. Okay, so meta, we just put dash in front of this, by the way. I don't know why I'm putting an equal sign. Probably because I did a lot of statistics this morning. There's meta, right? And then the one four designation is, gets a P in front of it, which is para. Right, so. And I'm just doing cursive for all of these, although you could just do regular. Often they're seen with some kind of different font. So that gives you a sense, okay? So having said this, we can do ortho, meta, and para. So let's do one that's kind of interesting, right? Let's do uh, something like that, right? All right, so name these is kind of the thought. Um, uh, 
CN. Nice. Okay. So in terms of this, there are several interesting moments here. The interesting moment that I've done here is that in each of these, there is a common name at work, right? So this part that I'm redoing in blue here, that's a common name, right? So that's actually a common name. And this is one, two. So the common name here is that it has a methyl coming off of it. So that's toluene, right? And then we have the two-membered group over here. That's an ethyl, right? So this would be known as ethyl toluene. But because it's 1,2, we could put 1,2 ethyl toluene. But because we're organic chemists, we decided to call it something different. That would be ortho ethyl toluene. Kind of interesting. Again, on the bottom one, this, right? That one is this entire thing that I've redone in blue, which I don't know if you can see, but I'm hoping, is the common name aniline, right? We just talked about that, or aniline. Okay, so in this case, we have this. That C triple bonded to N is called several names. Um, in basic organic naming, we have called it a cyano before. So why don't we call it that for this one? This would be cyano aniline. Okay. Um, and then because this is one, two, three, four, we could call that para. Now, cyano is not the only name for this, right? So nitrile is also, so you could call this aniline nitrile. That also works. Um, there are several different ways to label the C triple bond to the N. But just for clarity's sake, and because we're throwing it out there, there's uh, kind of an easier name to be able to work with. And this is kind of where we focus it on naming in terms of work. Uh, aromaticity. Um, you'll be able to name all kinds of compounds, but knowing the common names and then knowing this designation for di-substituted benzene rings is kind of the important stuff. All right, until I see you again.